What's up guys? Welcome to episode one of my meal prep mini series. This video is going to be all about the planning process, how to go about structuring your meals, creating a grocery list, and a bunch of tips and tricks for choosing the right vegetables or choosing the right combinations of meals so that it tastes good and doesn't go bad. I've had some meal prep failures. But I've also had a lot of meal prep success. All I do is win, 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 no matter what. Hopefully these tips will help you guys in your meal prep process. Let's get started. So step number one is figuring out how many meals you want to have prepped for the week. Do you want to just prep lunch and dinner? Do you want to just prep lunch? Do you want to prep five small meals throughout the day? For me and my meal prep, I plan all of my meals, but I only cook one or two. I'll always cook breakfast and like my dinner meal usually because I'm eating four meals and honestly cooking and meal prepping four meals is a lot of food especially when you're doing it for two people because me and Matt are both doing meal prep so usually I will have two meals prepped and two cooked sometimes I'll prep three but usually I always cook breakfast step number two is gonna be figuring out how you want to structure your meals a really simple and easy way to do it would just be to have one source of lean protein one source of vegetables one source of healthy fat and one source of healthy carb step number three I like to make a spreadsheet, which I will throw up an example on the screen. I usually just have how much of the protein, how much of the vegetables, how much of the fat, and how much of the carbs I wanna use in the meal. You don't have to count your macros to do meal prep, but like I said, just shoot to have like one healthy source of protein, some vegetables, a healthy source of fat, and a healthy source of carb, and you'll have a good solid meal. But if you want to be specific and planned, you can absolutely figure out how many macros you need at each meal. That's totally an option too. Keeping it simple is also nice because meal prep can be time consuming. But once you get the hang of it, I promise it's not so bad. Step number four is now to fill out your spreadsheet and start planning your meals. And what I like to do first, look at the ads for the week. I am balling on a budget, to be honest. You know, meal prep can get expensive. In the long run, you're saving money because you're planning, prepping all your meals. But if you're smart and look at the ads and plan your meals around what's in season, what's on sale, it gets a lot more budget friendly. I do all my shopping at Sprouts and King Supers, and I occasionally go to Whole Foods for like random niche things. I'm just gonna be honest, Whole Foods is great, but if you're trying to spend $200 a week, yeah, go to Whole Foods. Sprouts just has really good quality, cheap produce that I am all about. And then I get other things at King Supers for the fuel points. I'm kind of a crazy coupon lady, but that's okay. What I like to do is look at things that are on sale, pick out things I know I like, pick out things I know that work well, plug those in, and then from there I'll just fill in the blanks. Like this week, cauliflower is on sale. I could do some steamed cauliflower with some sweet potato and just some chicken breast. Or bell peppers are really cheap. As well as cucumbers are on sale. I could do raw cucumber and bell pepper with some salmon, which is also on sale. This is not an ad. I'm just like telling you what I actually do. <laughs> I usually try and shoot to have almost all of my meals with like one source of vegetables except for maybe one like if i'm having oatmeal i'm not gonna put broccoli in my oatmeal like gross you get the gist okay now i do have some do's and some don'ts for what vegetables what kind of things to pick for your meals because like i said there are things that save well things that don't save so well and i've had some flops and I've had some successes. I want to save you the trouble and not have any flops. So some do's and don'ts when it comes to picking the right vegetables. Cruciferous vegetables are your friend. Broccoli, cauliflower, Brussels sprouts, things like that. Things that hold up after they've been cooked. Things that, you know, aren't going to go soggy and limp. Those are good. Those are vegetables you want to pick because they're going to last. They're going to have a good reheat value, all that kind of stuff. 
Whereas you might not want to pick something like sauteed spinach or zucchini. Don't cook zucchini. It just gets soggy and it's just not the same. I love zucchini so much, but it's just not a good vegetable to meal prep with, in my opinion. Same with mushrooms. I feel like mushrooms can be done well if you're smart about it, but every time I've done it, they just get slimy and just not good. Also, root vegetables are your friend. So sturdy. Parsnips, carrots, beets. I freaking love beets. They're a great option to pick. Another option would be to keep your vegetables fresh because if you're not going to cook them, they're not going to most likely get soggy and limpy and bleh. You'll trial and error and figure out things you like, don't like, things that work, don't work. But those are my few tips. For vegetables on to protein a few of my favorite go-to proteins to use in meal prep chicken packaged tuna because then you can just grab that from the can and just throw that into your meal when you're ready to go ground turkey i love using ground turkey for my don'ts they're not really don'ts you have to be a bit more careful with it so things like fish like salmon i love using salmon but sometimes at the end of the week it kind of starts to smell fishy and not so good so you kind of have to be careful one thing you could do is cook salmon for half the week and then cook the other portion of the salmon in the mid part of the week that way you don't run the risk of it going bad from sunday to sunday steak honestly like it just kind of gets tough when you reheat it like the reheat value is just not very good so mm, mm, not the best but it's okay. So for fat, really most of the time what I do is use oil when I'm cooking my vegetables or cooking my meat. Just cause if your fat's gonna be like avocado, I would wait till the day of that you're gonna eat it and then take it with you to work or wherever you're going, to school. That way it, you don't run the risk of it going brown. Oh, ill, flip, ill, flip, ill. Carbs, carbs, carbs. Most carbs will hold up pretty well. My go-tos are rice, quinoa, fruit, sweet potatoes. I eat a lot of sweet potato. You could also do regular potato, I just prefer sweet potato. Some other sources of carbs could be corn, any corn sort of bean or lentils, black beans, chickpeas. Those are also really good carb sources. I usually do rice as like my post-workout because it's a lot easier to get more carbs in. And then if I want to be fuller, I don't want to have as many carbs, I'll do like a cup of sweet potato because a cup of sweet potato is like 27 grams of carbs and a cup of rice or quinoa is usually like 40. 45. On to step number five, make a grocery list. This is why I like making a spreadsheet because it really helps me create my grocery list. I look at my spreadsheet and I say, okay, I need two cups of broccoli for this meal and I'm going to eat this meal five days a week. Okay, so that means that I need 10 cups of broccoli. Then that helps me figure out how many heads of broccoli I need. I'll usually make the assumption that one head of broccoli is probably about two and a half to three cups. And then so I'll say, okay, I'll get like three or four heads of broccoli depending on how big the broccoli is at the store because sometimes, you know, you get little baby heads and sometimes you get really big heads. This is another tip, always err on more than less. If you have extra, okay, that's like not the end of the world. If you don't have enough, that sucks. Learn that the hard way too. So err on the side of a little bit more, a little bit less, and that will help you out a lot. So then once you've made your grocery list, you are ready to go to the grocery store, which will be on next episode of Meal Prepping with M. Thanks for watching this video. Remember to give it a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button and stay tuned next week for meal prep series number two, grocery shopping.